Let's review the concepts of covariance and correlation in this video. A simple example that you should be able to relate to is the ideal gas law. If we take a gas cylinder, it is a closed vessel which we can measure the temperature and the pressure quite easily for. If we increase the temperature of the vessel, we know from this equation here on the right hand side that the pressure will also increase. Since the volume is fixed, the number of moles is fixed and R is a constant. By simplifying that equation, we can collect the constant terms in this parameter beta 1, which we know to be a positive coefficient. We can see then that the pressure and the temperature will have some sort of relationship. In fact, when we go increase the temperature of the vessel, we record that the pressure value rises. At the same time, we might also record the humidity in the room where we're doing the experiment. So we have these three columns of data in our spreadsheet, for which we can go calculate the mean and the variance. The formal definition for covariance is that it is equal to the expected value of one variable x multiplied by y, where the variables x and y are in deviation form. There are a few unfamiliar things here. Firstly, inside the brackets, all we have done is mean-centered those vectors and created deviation variables for them. Let's apply this to the gas cylinder data. If we mean-center the temperature and mean-center the pressure, we get two new columns of numbers. The other new thing is the expectation operator. The generic definition of the expectation operator is to calculate the average of the population variable inside it. So then, the formal definition for covariance simply says to multiply these two deviation columns with each other, and then the expectation operator implies to calculate the mean of those multiplied numbers. Now the covariance has units as well. It has units of the original variables multiplied by each other. This can be awkward to work with and awkward to interpret. In this particular example, the covariance of temperature with pressure would have a value of 6,780 Kelvin times kilopascals. I'd like you to repeat that calculation for the covariance between pressure and humidity. Can you confirm that the value is 202 kPa times percentage? You'll also notice that the definition for covariance is symmetrical. If I switch X and Y around, I will get the same result. Please pause the video and verify that for yourself in a spreadsheet. Another thing that you must notice that if I have already centered the vector prior to applying this formula, I will still get the same numeric value. Pre-centering has not affected the covariance. But the main reason why we introduce the covariance here for you is to notice that if we replace the covariance formula of one variable with itself, we end up with a definition for variance. The covariance of a vector with itself is simply the variance. This helps you understand covariance in terms of something that you are already familiar with, which is variance. Covariance is just the variance of a variable with itself. Here's a side concept I want to introduce now, but don't worry if it's not immediately clear. Another reason for looking at covariance is to start to understand the mathematical terminology of matrices and vectors. Compare the variance formula above with the formula for x transpose x. If you consider what we're doing there in the spreadsheet to calculate the variance, you can see that it has a very strong similarity to the mathematical operation of the transpose of the vector with itself. The variance is directly proportional to the x transpose x value. The concept of x transpose y is directly proportional to the covariance of the variables x and y. The reason why I keep saying directly proportional is because the constant of proportionality is missing. The constant of proportionality would be the division by n, the number of samples, which is what the expectation operator does. And as a result, we can conclude that x transpose x is related to the variance and x transpose y is related to the covariance. Now let's move and look at correlation. Correlation can be seen as correlation or correlationship. Correlation is the same as covariance, except it removes the dependence on units by scaling through by a positive denominator term. If we look at that definition for correlation, then we notice in the numerator is the covariance of x with y, and the denominator is the square root of the variance of x multiplied by the variance of y. The denominator serves to cancel or remove the units and leaves a dimensionless result. It also means that the correlation can have a value of at most plus 1 and a value of minus 1 at the minimum. If we calculate the correlation of a variable with itself, in other words, r x comma x, 
we will always get a value of 1, indicating a variable is 100% correlated with itself. Looking back at the name, the measure of correlationship, if we happen to calculate the correlationship of a variable with itself, we should get the highest correlation possible, 100%, so that makes sense. Two variables which are entirely unrelated to each other will have a zero correlation. There is no relationship between those variables. And at the other extreme, one variable that is entirely the opposite to another variable will have a correlation of minus one at the other end. Let's go look back at the temperature and pressure example and calculate the correlation now of that quantity. The covariance is the numerator, which we've calculated before, and let's go divide through by that denominator term. We obtain a value of 0.997. The correlation of pressure with humidity is 0 0.380. Let's take a look at a few visual examples to start guiding our sense of the correlation's magnitude. Here we see a variable of x plotted against y, and there's a strong negative relationship between them. As x increases, we expect y to decrease. If we calculated the correlation between these two numbers of x and y, we would obtain a value of negative 0.9 in this example. Here's another example of two variables, x and y, that have essentially no relationship with each other. Their correlation value here is minus 0.15. A moderate correlation is observed in this plot, where we see a small positive trend. As x increases, there's a tendency for y to increase. The numerical correlation in this instance is 0.52. This last example is fairly subtle, but it indicates what correlation does and does not do. There's a very strong relationship here between x and y, a quadratic relationship. Initially, y will decrease as x increases, but then later on, y increases as x keeps increasing. A strong relationship is present, but the numerical correlation is of similar magnitude to this prior example, close to zero. What we learn from this is that a small correlation does not necessarily imply no relationship. This Wikipedia article illustrates the concept in a great way. Each of the small plots shows the correlation between a horizontal and a vertical variable on the scatter plot, but the axes are not shown. We can see the two extremes here in the first row. A variable that is 100% correlated with another variable looks like a straight line when plotted on a scatter plot and has a correlation of plus one. Here, all the way on the right-hand side, is a variable that is exactly the opposite to itself and it has a correlation of minus one. Then we have everything else in between. Especially note the correlation of zero. A correlation of zero implies no relationship between x and y on that scatter plot. The other remaining examples in the second and third rows serve to demonstrate some shortcomings of the correlation value. The last row indicates that the correlation between any two variables can be zero, indicating no correlation, but there is a very clear relationship in each one of these instances between the vertical and horizontal variable. From the center row's three left-hand side examples, we learn that a scaled constant will not affect the correlation. For example, in this first instance, there's a one-to-one -one relationship. But here, in this example, the relationship might be that x equals 0.5 times y. The correlation is still one, however. The mirror images are shown on the three right-hand side plots. So two things to end off with. First, I'll show here on the screen some of the formal definitions for variance and expectation that you should have learnt about in a prior statistics course. Take a look through each one of these and they build up successively from each other. Make sure that you can interpret what each one of them means and advanced students in the course should be able to do this without any problem. Finally, I want you to consider these four examples. Plot a scatter plot that shows the x variable and the y variable in each one of these cases. What was your expectation of the correlation, for example, between the number of hours worked per week and the average take home pay? When you sketch these plots, I'd like you to add a point or two onto the plot that indicates what an outlier might be for that correlation. What would be the interpretation of the outlier in each one of these instances?